I thought we'd take a look at some of the unique evergreens around the yard. Some are weeping, some are dwarf, some are grafted. We'll start here with the European weeping larch. Now the larch native habitat is a very, very wet area, but these will also take it quite dry. Another unique feature is a golden yellow fall color. Very, very nice in that respect. We've got some dead growth that's starting to happen on this one. We're gonna prune that out when it drops its needles. That'll make it just a little bit easier to work on. But the weeping larch, cool plant. When it was younger and not hitting the ground, it used to sway in the wind and it would just kind of sweep the wood chips back and forth. And right next to us here is the dwarf cesters, Colorado blue spruce. We're kind of reaching maximum size for this. It's considered to level out at about six feet by three to four feet wide. So it's been here about 10 to 12 years, purchased at about a three footer, but really slow growing, fits into those compact spaces. So nice, just one of my favorite little dwarf Colorado spruces. This is a pyramidal scotch pine. Just planted it, so it's new to me. Should maintain a nice upright habit. Right now it's got kind of a bluish needle to it, which is a little bit rare in my opinion with the scotch pine. Orange bark, that's another characteristic of the scotch pine. So we'll see if that develops as well. So again, a new plant. We won't say much more about this one. This is Quebec weeping cedar. And this is one of my favorites in the yard. They've done great here so far. I kind of wish I would have trained it a little bit longer with some type of a rigid post to get it taller. Now it's starting to weep down on a little bit shorter level, but we can still do that. But to Quebec, weeping cedar, just very unique. And the Taylor juniper. Look at that really nice, tight, upright, slender look. These can get about 25 feet tall. This one's probably about halfway there, but really cool Italian looking juniper for our area. And here we've got Taylor's Sunburst Lodgepole Pine. Look at that bright yellow new growth. That lasts for several weeks, maybe even up to about six weeks on certain springs. But that yellow is gonna fade to kind of the more deep green as you see on the inner branches there. But what a show in the spring, what a show. This is Weeping Norway Spruce. It's not quite as full as I'd like it to be. We're getting a little bit of some dieback or needle cast in here, not nearly as full as these specimens that you look at here. But overall, the plant's done pretty well here. Very unique form again with that weeping habit. They've got a nice size pine cone. Very showy, you know, and that's something to look at too on evergreens as far as another characteristic that we can enjoy. About five years ago, we had a hailstorm that was baseball hail. Look at the side of the house here. Look at that damage. We didn't really care about the house, you know, we were more concerned about the plants. But shortly after that, my sister-in-law had come to town as she saw this weeping Norway. And she asked me, oh my gosh, look at that poor thing. Did that what the hail did to it? We're like, no, no, that's the way it's supposed to be. So you same, Lori, you know change, but that's what we're looking for in some of these unique conifers. Um, it's an acquired taste and it's not for everybody. I've certainly learned that. As far as a character, oh my goodness. They say for, oh, okay. This is one of the weeping blue Colorado spruces. Look at that shelf. I think it's about eight feet long now. It just grew that way on its own and now it's starting to drop down with that pendulous weeping habit. But this has become a favorite spot to take a photo as it's perfectly framed in. But the Colorado Blue Weeping, there's a few different varieties out there. This one has just taken on a character of its own. And again, that's something we're looking for. Let these plants just showcase themselves and become unique in their own way. This is one of the dwarf Colorado blue spruces. It's getting a little bit beyond the dwarf category, but it grows mostly lower to the ground, broad, and does not get that height. If you take a close look here, I've had to clip back this terminal, oh, three or four times over the years, just to keep it into that globo shape, rather than allowing it to go back to pyramid. And that's what it'll do. Over time, it's gonna wanna take off and turn into a small, compact pyramidal spruce. This is Sherwood Compact Bristlecone Pine. Just an excellent little small conifer for that tight little area. It's got some really cool attributes. It's got a little waxy bloom on the needle. That's silvery. The cones are attractive. It's also believed that Bristlecone Pine is the oldest species living on Earth, several thousand years old. Here we've got Uncle Foggy Jack Pine. What a great name, Uncle Foggy. I just love it, but unique. Just wild, go wherever you want, 
twisting type fashion. I plan on putting some kind of a fence post or support to kick those branches upright. I might even go ahead and try to train it up and go over the top of this circle. Mm. I'm noticing this pine has a little bit of an off color, a little bit towards the yellow, especially coming out of winter, and the pine cone. The jack pine cones, they need fire to actually release those ovules. So you ever come across a jack pine cone and you collect one of those, throw it in your wood stove with a glass cover and you'll see those ovules slowly release. This is another one of the Norway spruces, red cone Norway spruce. As you can see from their picture here, that's where it gets its name. But it's kind of a mounding, odd shape type spruce. It's gonna get a lot bigger than this here. It can get up to that 12 to 15 feet eventually. So we'll probably have to go ahead and bring that edging out further. But for now, it's holding its own in a nice little compact shape here. This is dwarf compressed scotch pine. This is trained like this. These little balls like this, but they grow very, very slow. That way you can keep this unique looking bonsai type shape. We love this plant, just absolutely love it. I talked a little bit more about this plant a while back when we did some spiral juniper pruning and we brought up the scotch pine, how to trim back those candles. Every year we like to try something unique in these tall metal planters that we have. This is a blue weeping Alaskan cedar. It's not hardy, it's zone five, but it's something that we just put in here in the container and we'll overwinter it a couple seasons artificially where we keep that root temperature up. But you know, something different, something unique, something you're not gonna see everywhere. This is winter sun, mugle pine. It's green now, but boy, you get into the fall, into winter, it's got a beautiful yellow needles. Look at that, incredibly showy all through the winter. And then come spring, that starts fading back into the green. So a great mugle pine selection, absolutely fantastic for the winters. Here's another one of the larches. This is Horstman's Recurva. Look at that distorted twisting terminal and also the lateral branches, how they'll just twist and distort. Very, very unique. Thought we were maybe gonna lose this a few years back. We had the deer, they came up and rubbed up against it but has wounded itself off and it's doing great. Now this is naturally a wetland type plant, the larch, but this is in an incredibly dry area. So the larch once established can do very well in dry locations. So a nice deciduous evergreen with that yellow fall color. And the weeping white spruce. You know, one of my favorites, nice tall spruce, tallest we've looked at today. And it's got that pendulous habit on the branches. Mostly grows straight up, it can kind of get a little bit of a curve to it. Great spruce, just an absolutely hardy specimen. So there you have it, some great unique evergreens. I hope you enjoyed this garden hike. They say photography works best in the evening when you start getting that different light, but boy, they never mention the mosquitoes and uh, I'm getting carried away. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next time.